In this session, I'm going to be talking about Avalonia uh, and why I think it's the, the best cross-platform UI technology available um, and why I think you should give it a try. Um, it's going to be a kind of whirlwind tour. There's quite a few little demos that I'll be showing you. Um, but let's let's start right at the beginning. So my general feeling is that Avalonia is an overnight success based on a decade of hard work. So not many people know about Avalonia. I think it's the best kept secret within the .NET community, but it's been around for a decade. It's been developed by uh, people from all over the globe. In fact, our 10 year anniversary, I think it's December 5th this year. So the plan is to get some of the team together uh, in Italy and we'll have some pasta uh, and some, some nice sparkling wine to celebrate uh, all of the hard work that's gone into building Avalonia. Uh, but it's an open source project um, that, as I say, it's been developed by the community over the last decade. But what it actually is it? Well, it's a cross-platform UI framework that enables you to build applications for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, and WebAssembly. Now, we have some new platforms kind of in preview. So we have Tizen support coming. I think there's a, a pull request for web, web OS support as well. And we've been experimenting with Vision OS support. So the new Googles, uh, Googles, the new goggles uh, from, from Apple. Um, so yeah, we can run across a, a myriad of different platforms, but we can do this all from a single .NET project. So I say .NET standard, but it's, you know, we're targeting, uh, you can go all the way back to .NET standard. You can run on uh, .NET framework if you want to, uh, but most people are using uh, .NET 6, 7, or even .NET 8 runtimes uh, to build their Avalonia applications. And as I mentioned, it's been developed over the decade by hundreds of contributors from all over the globe. So this isn't uh, this isn't created by some large corporate entity and then gifted to the community. This is kind of grassroots movement to develop uh, a competitor to WPF that runs across uh, more than more than just Windows. So it runs across a myriad of different platforms. And this kind of uh, growth uh, has been quite significant. So here we are compared to Maui. Uh, I checked the stats this morning um, and we we just about surpassed them. I think there's like maybe 15 stars difference between us on GitHub. Um, I mean, it's a total vanity metric, so it doesn't really mean anything, but it's still nice to see that we're up there uh, in terms of popularity uh, with the official solution from Microsoft. Uh, we're also part of the .NET Foundation. So when we look at the, the kind of engagement with Avalonia, uh, on a month by month basis, or even on a slightly longer term basis, what we tend to see is that we're the most actively engaged community project within the foundation. Um, so this is something we're really proud of. Um, so it depends what metrics you're looking at. Some, some months it's we're most commits, some months it's most pull requests, some months sadly it's most issues, but you know, people are using us, they're engaged, uh, and that's fantastic to see. Now, I think that these kind of technologies, um, they, they live and die by the ecosystem that they exist within. And since I joined Avalonia, this has kind of been my real focus because when I joined, we didn't have a huge amount of third party uh, partnerships. Um, and that's something I've been working to try and solve. So we've, we've partnered with a, a myriad of different companies to, to expand the ecosystem. Um, these are just a couple of the logos. Um, so there's JetBrains on there. Uh, obviously our favorite IDE uh, is JetBrains Rider. Um, JetBrains are using uh, Avalonia, uh, which I'll talk about a little later. Uh, but we've partnered with control vendors as well. As I say, to, to grow the ecosystem so that you're not just stuck with uh, what's available from the open source community, which while fantastic, if you're building an enterprise application, you might want to have those pro controls. Um, so we've got a, a long list of other control vendors that uh, we're working with that we're not quite ready to, to talk about publicly yet. Um, but as I say, the, the ecosystem is growing massively, um, which is fantastic to see. And in terms of who is using Avalonia, well, I mentioned JetBrains. Um, 
assuming you're using Rider, and you should be, um, if you've ever done any uh, like performance testing of your application, maybe you've used .memory or .trace, um, so you're profiling your application, then the the, the graph views and, and that view within Rider is actually an Avalonia application. So the original app was built using WPF and JetBrains wanted to take it cross-platform and they assessed all of the different technologies available uh, to them and ultimately decided to, to bet big on, on adopting Avalonia. So you've probably already used an Avalonia app without knowing. Um, we also have other uh, large well-known companies using us like GitHub, Schneider Electric, uh, Unity use it for uh, their uh, it, it said source control application. Um, then there's Canon OutSystems and Moody's Analytics. And what we seem to, to see is that obviously we're a very enterprise focused technology um, in terms of company adoption. Um, they've typically got experience with WPF or some other XAML technology. Perhaps it's Silverlight uh, or they've tried WinUI or UWP. Um, and they want to leverage those existing skills and often existing code whilst being able to target more platforms. So uh, being such an enterprise technology, um, we, we've got many, many users of Avalonia that are Fortune 500 companies. Um, so it's, a, you know, I think there's a, a lot of weight put behind it because it's got this decade of engineering and work gone, gone into it. It's a stable and mature uh, platform to build on um, and it's been as I say it's been adopted by some absolutely huge companies for for mission critical applications and um, so it's kind of a safe bet for for when you're looking to uh, find a cross-platform solution for your application now you know the ecosystem there's multiple options for you uh, we're not the only one and um, so I think it's worth discussing uh, our architecture and what sets us apart from the competition so this is this is a typical slide that I show when I talk about our architecture, and I don't think it's the cleanest, but it, it does get the job done. Um, the, the key thing here is really to understand uh, the colored boxes and what's inside of them. So if we start right at the bottom, we've got this eye rendering platform, and this is how we push pixels to the screen. So we're not using native UI controls. Um, so if, you're, if you've used Xamarin or, or MAUI, um, then that's an abstraction API on top of the native UI controls. Uh, we, we're drawing everything to screen ourselves, so we need some form of renderer. Now, on Windows, you can use Direct2D, um, but that obviously isn't cross-platform, so it kind of defeats the, the whole point of using Avalonia. Um, so if you want that cross-platform functionality, then you'll want to use Skier instead. Um, so this is the same approach that Chrome is using. So if you've used Chrome uh, web browser, then that's a, a skier based application, uh, but also any application built with Flutter. So we're in really good company with this approach, um, and it gives us a huge amount of flexibility in terms of creating applications that look fantastic across all of these varied platforms, but also has an incredible uh, performance. So. In order to support a new platform, I mentioned we've got Tizen coming, uh, we're playing around with Vision OS. Um, the, we don't really need a huge amount to make it work. So uh, we have that skier, which is responsible for, for drawing the pixels and the rendering uh, perspective. Um, we need a window in order to push pixels into. So we use Win32 on Windows. Um, we use uh, our own binding approach on Mac OS. So there's no dependency on what used to be Mono Mac and then Xamarin Mac. And we have our own approach because say we just need the window and very minimal APIs uh, that are platform specific. And then on Linux, we, we use X11. Um, but Linux is an interesting one because we can because of this architecture, we can run on some very low powered devices and we can use uh, the, the frame buffer to output uh, our pixels. So we can push pixels to the screen via just the, the Linux kernel. We don't need to install a full desktop environment to run our application. So our competitors, uh, I mean, they used to have Linux support. I think there's a community version uh, being worked on, but they're dependent on GDK. 
Um, so they need you know quite a heavy dependency in order to support Linux. Um, we don't have that, so we, we don't need it. Um, we can just push the pixels using Skia um, and, and push the pixels to the screen using uh, the frame buffer or uh, KMS or the DRM. In fact, I've got here next to me, this is a, a Raspberry Pi, uh, and it's running a HMI application. Um, in, it's not a full screen, it is just like, it's using the frame buffer. So there's no concept really of a window here. Uh, we're just pushing all of the pixels to the screen directly. Um, and in fact, this is using uh, the Meadow uh, SDK. So if you if you know of Wilderness Labs and their embedded electronics uh, platform that they're building uh, for .NET developers, and they have an SDK that makes integrating with stuff like Raspberry Pis incredibly easy. And you can attach sensors to the, the pins here uh, on the device and then you get the the sensor data updating your ui screen uh, on on the screen so we're seeing an awful lot of adoption of avalonia uh, by companies that have typically built with qt or qt i'm never quite sure how to say that um i think wiki says that it's cute but it always feels odd to describe it as such qt we'll call it qt um but it's c plus plus and it's it's very much targeting embedded and they've built these applications and they're finding the development experience just isn't great. So they're migrating over to Avalonia and they really appreciate the fact that number one, we support Linux and it's a first class support for Linux. Um, we've got a very broad range of uh, distros that we support, but also that we have that embedded play and that we can run on very, very minimal hardware. I think the, the lowest, uh, lowest powered device I've seen us run on is like a, a CPU from 2002, a 32-bit ARM processor with like 500 megahertz. Um, so really, really low powered in the scheme of uh, trying to run a managed language uh, like .NET. Obviously, we have full AOT uh, compatibility. So yeah, this is the, I've kind of digressed a lot here. Uh, I wanted to skip past this slide pretty quickly to show you the architecture in a way that you might be more familiar with. So on the left-hand side, we have the Maui architecture, which is that abstraction API. And then on the right-hand side, we have the Avalonia architecture. And the really, really key thing here to understand is the rendering is different. As I keep saying, we use Skia. So there's no abstraction on the native API, uh, on the native UI controls, which means that it's very easy for us to add these new platforms. Uh, the other difference, but it's not really one that you'll you'll notice too much, is that our runtime is slightly different. On macOS, you'll be using the standard .NET runtime. I've got .NET Core here, but the naming with .NET is terribly difficult to keep up with. Um, but it's .NET 6, .NET 7, .NET 8. Um, and then we only use the mono runtime for iOS and Android. Um, so yeah, the, the key thing here is that that rendering layer is unified across all of the platforms. So if uh, if a new platform becomes extremely popular, it's very easy for us to add support. And as I said right at the beginning, we've got Tizen coming, and that's a that's a community uh, effort. There's a, a guy in the community uh, that's been working on that. Um, so it's it's not the most uh, I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's not its not a huge amount of work to add new platforms for us. I think the smallest amount of code required to add a platform, uh, if you check out the VNC example, I think it's like 200 lines of code. Um, because once we can push pixels to a screen and we can get user interaction uh, events, maybe it's a mouse click or a screen tap, um, then the application can run on that new platform and we're basically good to go. Now, what this also means with this approach is that uh, when we're not really tied um, to using like Mono, for example, there's the, the experimentation around uh, Bionic compilation. Um, and we played around with this early, earlier in the year to see what kind of performance could we get if we, uh, if we ditched using uh, the standard Mono runtime. I'm just going to load this video. There's no audio. Uh, it's just... It's just a video, but you can see here that this approach to compilation and how fast the apps load here on Android. So it's incredibly quick uh, to launch the application. You can see decent performance there. And then we, we switch to the more traditional. This is just a Xamarin application or using the Xamarin runtime um, with AOT. Um, so you can see it's a little bit slower. It's still, it's still okay, but it's not as fast as that Bionic approach. Um, and then I think lastly, this is just a normal Xamarin without AOT and, you know, it's significantly slower to load the application. 
Um, so this is just a proof of concept that we created um, to explore the idea of using Bionic uh, with Avalonia to see what we could get in terms of performance. Uh, it definitely needs fleshing out. Um, but what I like about this is it shows that we're, we're quite happy um, to, to not always require what's coming from Microsoft. If we think we can do something slightly different, um, then, then we'll embrace that approach. So let's get rid of the browser. We don't need to be there. Uh, perfect. So in terms of uh, how your application looks, you have full control. So, oh, excuse me. Um, this is this is an application called Fluent Search. So this was created by, he works at Microsoft, um, but this is developed in his spare time. And this is an Avalonia application, but I think we can all agree that this looks totally fine on uh, modern Windows 11 PC. You wouldn't assume that this isn't using the native UI toolkit. You would think, you know, this is probably a WinUI application. It's not, it's just a really well-themed Avalonia application. And this is, we can see this in multiple different applications. Um, so this is Speckle, and this is using a community provided material design theme. So this would look you know, uh, right at home on Chrome OS, uh, or if they wanted to create an Android version of this application, I think for this, this one, it wouldn't make much sense, but uh, if they wanted to, it'd look right at home there. And we've seen lots of users uh, of Avalonia adopting material design uh, as their theme. And then this is a Cupertino theme that I put together in it's about two afternoons work. So, you know, it was pretty quick to get this to get this built. Um, and it looks like I, well, I think it looks passing uh, resemblance to, to how Mac OS looks. Um, so it's very, very easy to style your application to, to whatever you want. And I'll show you some examples of, of how we do that. Uh, in the demos. Um, and then in terms of the developer experience, so I think if you're building with Avalonia, you should just use Rider. So we do have extensions for the other IDEs, I won't, um, those that shall not be named, um, but those are built by us. Um, and to be perfectly frank with you, we are not experts at building tools for IDEs. And for example, the, the XAML completion I won't use the word, the word IntelliSense because I think that's trademarked, but XAML completion, that's like a PhD just on its own or code completion. Uh, and we, we don't have that experience. So whilst it works, it, the best developer experience is coming from Rider. And the, the key part or the key reason for that is because JetBrains is using Avalonia. They have invested in creating top-notch tooling. So Rider really understands uh, Avalonia XAML and the, the entire project. So you get a lot of nice features just built into the IDE. And then if you want to take it one step further, you can download the Avalonia Rider plugin from the, the marketplace, and that will give you the, the XAML previewer window as well. And that's actually maintained by a JetBrains employee, I believe. Um, so yeah, the, the built-in IDE is fantastic on its own, just vanilla Avalonia code completion. But if you want that additional uh, ability to, to have XAML uh, Previewer built in, then grab the extension. So that's enough waffling. Uh, let's let's jump into the IDE and we'll, we'll create a, a new project and I'll, I'll walk you through it. So we're going to do file new solution. Now I've installed the templates. Um, there's a couple of different templates. We have MVVM, um, which is a bit like MVC, but with more Vs and Ms. Um, then we have just a vanilla.net app, and this is more that code behind. So if you've ever done uh, like win forms where you double click on a button and then you put the code for that click event uh, in the code behind, this is the template for you. And then we have a cross-platform template, uh, which includes stuff like the browser, uh, browser project and iOS and Android projects. Uh, but the desktop, if you're just building for desktop, then you can just go avalonia.net MVVM app. Uh, as your template. I'm going to leave the name. Uh, it's not important. And there we go. So give it a second. There we go. It's restored the, the NuGet packages. Um, 
The project structure is pretty familiar. If you've ever done any WPF development, then you are already an Avalonia expert. Um, you'll see that we have XAML. Um, I did see someone was doing some experiments with uh, Razor syntax, which was very interesting to me. Um, but most most developers are using XAML, but you don't have to. You can, you know, this this window here, if I uh, command click it, uh, we're going to get to the I mean, this is what I absolutely love about Rider, just being able to command click my way into, into the internals of libraries. Um, we can see this window, it's uh, Avalonia control. We can create an instance of this through code. So everything you see me do today with XAML is entirely possible to do uh, through code as well. So if you like to develop purely in, in C sharp, or maybe it's F sharp, or maybe VB.net, maybe there's a few of you out there that like to to indulge in VB, then you can you can also use Avalonia without having to learn or, or embrace XAML. Now, I happen to love XAML, uh, so that's what I'll be demoing with today. Um, so yes, we have our, our main window here. Um, it's got some code behind, but we're not animals, so we just ignore that and pretend it doesn't exist. Um, and then we have our view model. And I think the template here is using uh, reactive UI. So let's uh, let's command click on that. And then, yes, we can see we're inheriting from reactive object. Um, so that's providing like the, the I notify property changed uh, goodness that we all know and love. Uh, so the view model has just got this greeting, which is uh, welcome to Avalonia. Um, and we're creating a binding to the text block here. Uh, and we have, you know, the, the des uh, design data context, which is useful. So if I build this, uh, excuse me. Let me find the B key, I've got a microphone in my face. Uh, I'll build that and then I, I'm gonna press this button and it's showing me the live previewer. So I have to do that build at least once in order to get the previewer to start updating. But now I can start typing some, uh, some code, some XAML and it's gonna update live for us. We'll do 50, we'll do background. And you can see I'm, I'm getting this full XAML completion. Uh, so we get a kind of dot do situation here. I don't actually really need to know the API. I can just kind of browse my way through what the IDE is suggesting to me, which is super nice. And then obviously I can just hit run. And whilst that's running, hopefully I'll have enough time to drop into the CS proj so you can see what's going on here. Oh, it's very quick. But there we have our cross-platform application and I can take that and I can go and run it on, you know, to, little Raspberry Pi that I've got here, or I can run it on the iPhone, on Android, or even the web browser. Um, so we're, you know, we don't have to worry around about installing workloads or any any nonsense like that. Uh, we just Microsoft.NET SDK, output type win.exe, and in this case, I'm using Net7. I could update that to Net8, it already works. Um, in fact, I don't think we even needed to do any changes to make that work, it was just built in. Um, so I'll show you something slightly more interesting. Um, so this is this is a really old application. I wrote I think I wrote this about two years ago because I was I was I decided I wanted to learn how to do RX uh, or reactive programming. Uh, it turns out that I can definitely build a project that uses RX um, if I like dedicate a couple of weeks to, to reading books and, and blog posts. The problem is I've forgotten how all of that works. So I now have a project that I can't maintain. Uh, but I did update it uh, a couple of days ago uh, to the latest version of Avalonia, which is 11.0.4. Uh, and it still runs on, on my machine. But the, the reason I wanted to show you this application um, Again, to kind of show you a, a little bit more of an advanced project. It's you know it's not super advanced, um, but it, there's some really nice things that we get just by using Rider. So, for example, I've got this uh, XAML namespace with the, the view model here, and it's you know using LFO test view models. If I command click that view models, I get a list of all of the other classes that exist within that namespace, and I can click on it, and it's going to take me straight there. So, just navigating uh, my project. Um, within Rider is just it's so so nice um, and you know I've got this binding here to this uh, view uh, main view model because it understands that that's my data context and then dot uh, rate slider value if I command click that I get get to go uh, into the view model and, and see where that property is defined um, you can see I'm, I'm using where are we here we go here's some of that RX goodness that 
is completely over my head uh, nowadays. I wouldn't dare try and edit any of this code because it would probably immediately break. Um, so another nice feature of Avalonia is that we have uh, the ability to create templated controls. Um, so this is a templated control. Well, let's, uh, let's use some of the nice features. There we go. We'll, tid we'll tidy up the code as we go through. So this is a templated control. Um, the, the style for it is defined elsewhere. I'm just defining the, the feature of it, which is, you know, it's got a property of is selected. So it's not, you know, the most advanced control. Uh, by any stretch stretch of the imagination, um, but the the actual look of the control is defined elsewhere in this uh, playback fader dot azaml. Now it's azaml. You could have it extension as xaml. It would also work. Um, but we get the previewer appear here, and we can see that this is the uh, the xaml that is defining the look of this uh, control, and we can interact with it in here as well. Um, it's fully interactive. Uh, and again, just like before, we can update properties, and it, it should. Uh, I mean, let's change that to red. There we go. Instantly update. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I'll run this so you can see what it's doing, because um, it kind of makes sense for the next demo, so you understand what that application is for. So I, I got into Avalonia because I had a WPF app uh, where I wanted to control lights. So like when you go to a concert and you see the, the lights wobbling around uh, like it's a rave, uh, here we go. I'm going to pop that over there. We'll start. This is a, just a very simple test application uh, so that I can... It was to play around with uh, effects generation, so I can do some stuff like add oscillator. Uh, there we go. I'll do sine wave. I'll set some random values, and then it just starts moving around. So it's not, not the most advanced application, but it was just to play around with Rx. Um, now, the nice thing about this, you know, this is very dark, but this is very light, and my retinas are, are kind of screaming at me. So I'm going to go to the OS, and I'm going to say switch to, to dark mode, and look at that. Instantly, the application is aware of the operating system uh, style request, and it will update for me. And this is using the built-in Fluent theme that we provide for you. Um, so you get a pretty nice-looking application without having to do a huge amount of work. And then, obviously, as I change uh, back to, to light mode, the application updates for me live. So that's pretty neat. Uh, but sometimes you want, you know, you don't want to just use the, th the themes that we provide. You want to create something from scratch and something a bit more complicated. So this is, uh, the, well, this is like the big brother of that application. This is uh, designed to run on a you know, big console with faders and buttons and uh, a huge project now. Um, what's that? 15 projects, two unloaded. Uh, I've got a slight error in my command line parsing, which uses Antler, but I, I don't think I reference that. So let's uh, let's get this running. And you can see an application where I've gone kind of a bit crazy on, on trying to style everything to look a little bit different. And this is, uh, this is a real benefit of using a technology like Avalonia, is that I have complete control over how my application looks. So if you care about how your app looks, and you've got specific kind of brand guidelines or styles that you're trying to achieve. Um, if you if you go with other technology, you can probably get there, but you're going to be reinventing the wheel for every platform that you target. Um, you're going to be having to customize for, for each platforms like iOS, Android, Windows, and the Mac. Whereas with Avalonia, you, you do it once, and it runs the same everywhere. Um, so let me show you some of the some of what I've been working on with this little application. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty basic at this point. It's not hugely complex, um, but it allows me, like, like you saw before, I can control lights. Um, so in this case, I can add a lot more lights. You might be able to see behind me on right, right on the desk over there on the shelf, there's a, a, a wobbly light, uh, which is this one, which if I plugged in, I could blind you all through the camera, uh, but I won't do that. Um, but yeah, so we have, you know, as I say, full styling. So these buttons that are themed to look like physical, like Cherry MX buttons. Um, so if you're a noisy typer with those mechanical keyboards, this might look a little bit familiar to you. Um, and we've got, you know, smooth animations and, and all of that goodness. So yeah, that's um, that's a kind of very brief overview of uh, the open source Avalonia 
experience. And now I want to talk a little bit about uh, something slightly newer. I say slightly newer. So this is something we announced in, oh, I think it was November um, last year. So we, we talked about the Maui hybrid. So this approach was that you could take Avalonia and embed it inside Maui applications, which is, you know, that's great. There's a lot of demand for that. Um, it allows you to have stuff like the, the nice uh, data grid control that we have uh, available to you in a Maui application. But as an Avalonia developer, I wanted to, to go the other way. I wanted to be able to take Maui controls and bring those into my Avalonia app. So we created a sample recently uh, that allows you to do that. So this, this enables you to mix and match both ways with Maui. So if you've got a Maui app, you can bring in Avalonia controls. And if you've got an Avalonia control, if you've got an Avalonia app, uh, for iOS and Android, you can bring in those mobile specific UI controls, uh, both from the community, let's say like the community toolkit, but also from the likes of Sync Fusion, uh, GrailKit, Grape City, Telerix. It's like 150 plus UI controls that are mobile specific and now available to you uh, on mobile with Avalonia. So I'd like to show you a little demo of that. So where is it? Avalonia Maui hybrid. So it's the, the Maui sample we showed last year. Um, Ryder doesn't understand the XAML because it's, I mean, it's a bit complicated because we've got Avalonia XAML embedded within uh, Maui XAML. It, it understands much more uh, the Avalonia approach. So putting Maui into Avalonia, but you can see that this is just a, just like before, it's a standard Avalonia application. We've got this uh, XAML namespace, which is Avalonia UI. Uh, we have a main window. Um, within that, we have the main view. And it's within this main view that the magic is really happening. So we have uh, some Maui controls. So we've got the namespace for just your typical Maui controls. Uh, we have a progress bar that's coming from Sync Fusion. Uh, and then we also have a, a media player that is coming from the community toolkit. And so we can mix and match that. We just have the one view model. Let's command click it. Not a lot happening there. Uh, we do have some code behind as well. Uh, in this case, we are animals, uh, it turns out. So we have it that when the media, media uh, control is playing, we update the progress bar. So let's jump back into the XAML. Uh, we have here, I mean, this, this is uh, a nice feature. If I remove this, I think, it, there we go, look at that. Rider is intelligent enough to show you what row that's going to be on anyway. So if you don't explicitly set it, Rider will tell you, oh, that's going to be on row zero, which is just another lovely little feature of Rider. Um, so anyway, we have this, which is a uh, command click it. Uh, we can see the grid is coming from Avalonia. Um, we have a text box. So let's click that. Oh, look at that. It's from Avalonia. Um, the button is also from Avalonia, but then we have this controls Maui control host. And within that we have Maui control button. If I click that, we can see, oh, that's a Maui control. So continuing down, we have the, the progress bar, which is coming from Sync Fusion. And then below that, we have a text box, which is Avalonia. And then we have the, the media element, um, which is coming from the community toolkit. So there we go. We've uh, decompiled that as well, so you can have a look. Um, and now let's uh, let's run that on the simulator. Here we go. So Avalonia, 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 Maui, Maui, and then this control here is Maui as well. And I can skip forward and we can see the progress ring from Sync Fusion is, is uh, moving as expected. There we go. So this is absolutely excellent. If you've, if you've been looking at Avalonia and you've been thinking, oh, I'd really like to use it on mobile, but they're missing this control, or they're missing that control then you now have the ability to mix and match in both directions. And so as I say, it's over 150 plus pro controls are now available to you uh, within Avalonia that are mobile specific, which is uh, fantastic news. So moving on, Avalonia XPF. So this is something I'm really excited about. Um, we 
we created a company, um, the core team, so there's about 12 of us now, um, that had been working on Avalonia for years. And there was a huge demand from businesses to, to help them migrate to Avalonia. Now, it would either be support contracts or development services. And if we take development services as an example, large companies would pay us to port their applications to Avalonia, typically from WPF. And there's a couple of problems here. Number one is the the cost to the customer is quite high and the time it takes is quite long, especially for very complex applications. And then from our perspective, we don't really want to grow old porting WPF applications to Avalonia. Like it's, we can do it. There's no problem with it uh, if that's what you really want, but uh, it's not ideal for you. You're going to have to spend a lot of money and you know kind of put development on pause for a few years uh, you're not adding new features you're just reinventing the wheel to get to stay in the same place so we decided well, why don't we uh, why don't we fork wpf rip out the internals and replace it with avalonia and it sounds mad um, but that's what we did um, so right now we support Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Uh, we do have internal previews of iOS, Android, and the browser, uh, but we'll be shipping those kind of licenses and selling licenses for that uh, next year. Um, so with this approach, by utilizing WPF and replacing the low levels with Avalonia, we can take your application to new platforms with little to no changes. So this is absolutely huge. And this means that the core team can pivot from, instead of creating applications specifically for one or two customers uh, that you know nobody gets any real benefit from that other than the customer, uh, we, we've now got a source of revenue that allows us to continue to build Avalonia for the greater good of the community. And um, so we're really excited about this. Um, so in terms of the architecture, we've got WPF here on the left and XPF on the right. So presentation framework and presentation core are largely unchanged. There's almost zero changes that occur within these two layers. Where the difference begins is in this mill core layer, which is the composition engine of WPF. So WPF is very similar to Avalonia, or, or Avalonia is similar to WPF, in that it's, people talk about it being a native UI toolkit for Windows. Well, it, it is, it comes with Windows, but it's rendering everything to a DirectX canvas. So in the same way that we render everything to, to a skier canvas, we're, we're both just rendering, and there's a composition engine to, to do that, to take all of your UI controls and the animations and all of that goodness and turn it into pixels that we can push to a canvas. So that's the layer that we've gone ahead and replaced with Avalonia. And then we've had to do a lot of work around implementing GDI and some Win32 APIs to run cross-platform, things like the registry, um, which are very common for, for applications that kind of sit at the top layer all the way up here. Um, that they expect to be there. Um, so yeah, your application sits up here. We update the project SDK, we hit F5, and then it starts running on XPF. And we can run that on Mac OS and Linux, and obviously Windows, um, and new platforms coming soon. So I'm going to show you a demo. We'll, let's start with uh, Family Show. So this is, um, this is a packaged application. So in fact, I'm just going to show you We'll show in Finder. There it is. Let's do package contents, uh, Mac OS. We can see these are all just native libraries. So we've done a head of time compilation, which is impossible to do with WPF. Um, we've made it possible with uh, XPF. Um, so this is a really early uh, example application that was made for Microsoft to demonstrate just how cool uh, WPF is. Um, and with very minimal code changes, we've got this running here uh, on Mac OS, and we can also have it running on Linux as well. Uh, and this is available to download from our website if you want to try it out. Um, but yeah, so it's a, a properly packaged application. Uh, but let's let's look at some other things. So here we have a sample application from Sync Fusion. So this is an interesting one because as Third-party control vendors, they have absolutely zero concept of XPF because a lot of these control libraries were built uh, before XPF existed. Um, so we have to make sure that these control libraries continue to work. Um, 
with the only changes that we're making is within the CS proj. So you can see I've updated the project SDK. In this case, I'm using a local build of XPF that I have on my machine, but we also have a NuGet packages that are available, um, private NuGet feeds to, to paying customers who are using XPF. Um, but apart from that, it really is just a WPF application. So let's uh, let's pull out some. Uh, here we go, XAML, and we can see, you know, the namespaces. It's all just WPF. And obviously, Rider is is quite quite adept at understanding how to deal with uh, WPF XAML, even though we're not on a PC. It, it understands how to how to use that, and all of these types are resolving as they should uh, once we update that project SDK. So I'm going to hit build, and we're going to run this. Now, we haven't worked with Syncfusion to make this work. These are the standard NuGet packages that you can go and find on NuGet today, uh, but they're now running on a Mac. Now, the first thing I think that is really quite obvious is that the window decoration is entirely wrong for a Mac, and that's because this uh, is a custom window provided by the Syncfusion SDK, uh, and it obviously is designed to only run on Windows. Um, so they had no idea that we would be savages and try and run it on a Mac. Uh, but it does work perfectly. So our, our general advice is you probably just want to use a native window uh, when you're using XPF um, rather than these custom uh, custom windows. Uh, but there's, you know, all of these showcase just work. And we've got stuff like, um, I quite like the 3D charts. Here we go. And again, zero code changes. This is just the standard uh, standard code uh, that is coming from Syncfusion in those NuGet packages. Um, and it's it's their sample application that we, we've taken and we've made run uh, on Mac OS powered by XPF. Um, what else have we got here? We can add some text. Say hello world. Yeah, bold, perfect. Uh, what else? I mean, there's a few other controls. So you can see these complex controls uh, just working. And we, we've got great support. Oh, we'll ignore that. We'll pretend that it will just work perfectly. We've got great support for a huge amount of control vendors. So Active Pro, uh, Syncfusion, Dev Express. Um, we're working with SciCharts to enable those to those charts to run uh, on XPF as well. Um, and this is another example application, this time from Infragistics. And again, we're just updating the project SDK. The rest of the application remains unchanged. Um, so we're interested in Microsoft stock price over the last yeah, maximum, whatever. Uh, we can see it's all very performant. In our internal benchmarking, we're seeing fantastic performance and customers are letting us know uh, that they're seeing increased frames per second uh, and increased performance, which is great to hear. So you can you can grab a, a trial for XPF and test it with your applications. Just go to avaloniaui.net forward slash XPF. Uh, and if you do buy a license, then it goes towards supporting us to continue to build uh, build the open source project. And lastly, I'm almost, almost finished here. Uh, we've got hybrid XPF. So in, in some situations, we found customers the, they want to migrate to Avalonia, but there's one or two controls that just aren't available within Avalonia that they want. And while I'm growing and working to grow the, the ecosystem, we're not there yet. We're not our final destination. So we asked, would it, wouldn't it be great if you could take one or two WPF controls and embed them within your Avalonia application as a kind of stop gap uh, so that you can still ship a cross-platform application uh, to, to Mac OS and Linux, iOS, Android, and, and the web? but have this dependency on this critical WPF control uh, that you need in order to make that project uh, a success or even viable. So that's what we've got with Avalonia XPF, and I will show you a demo. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go, hybrid XPF. So in this case, I have my main window, which is notice a XAML, so that's Avalonia XAML. Um, we have our shared, uh, main view model, but we have this XPF container. 
So the XPF container has then got this uh, scheduled view. And if I command click that, we can go to the XAML for this, which is just here. Uh, but this is a WPF control. And in this case, we're using Sync Fusion uh, and we're using the scheduler. So I'll run this because I'm running short on time. There we go. So this is a WPF control embedded within an Avalonia control. So this is the hybrid approach. And this now brings over 700 uh, UI pro UI controls to Avalonia uh, for you to enjoy. And that is a wrap. If you want to learn more about Avalonia, I recommend heading over to our GitHub, which is Avalonia UI forward slash Avalonia. And we have a really active community of uh, developers on Telegram who will be more than happy to help and assist you if you have any questions or get stuck. And there's also getting started in documentation and all of that goodness that you can find on our website, which is avaloniaui.net. Thank you. All right. That was a great talk. A lot of good stuff in here. Um, yeah, I really like that whole um, success overnight after 10 years of development and hard work is really true. Yeah, definitely yeah. true. It's been a journey. Well, it's looking fantastic. I gotta say, I'm, I was very impressed with some of the demos there, actually. that's um, it, it looks really cool. It looks really good. Uh, and yes, we were using it in Rider as well. So if you're using the profiling tools, dot, uh, the dot memory and uh, dot trace style profiling tools in Rider, those are actually Avalonia controls embedded in uh, in Rider, so there's there's lots of uh, cool magic going on with all of these things. Um, it's um, yeah, it's brilliant stuff. It's cool. So thank you very much for for the demos there. Um, I'm going to dive straight in with a, a, a fairly basic question um, because you know I'm aware of Avalonia uh, and I'm aware that it's like a, a cross platform UI toolkit based on XAML, and it's like well, oh, I also know about WPF, and that's a UI toolkit based on XAML. And it's like, well, what's the relationship between the two XAMLs there? Is, Avalonia XAML is not WPF XAML, is it? Yeah, that, so we're inspired by WPF, but we're not a one-to-one -one copy. So we're really similar, but there are some places where we've made changes. So I think styling is the most obvious one. Our style approach is more like CSS. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you've built with WPF and you've experienced with it, then you're basically an Avalonia expert. It will take you a couple of days to get up to speed uh, and be really proficient with it. Um, so because we're so similar, th there's a natural journey for WPF developers that, that want to go cross-platform or they're looking for a modernization technology, um, being you know, worried about the future of the, the technology. Uh, and wanting to future-proof their applications. Yeah, that that that's really cool. It is. It's just uh, I think XAML itself is just confusing because you hear XAML and therefore you think WPF, and so when you come across it in somewhere uh, somewhere else like Avalonia, it's like you're not quite sure what the relationship is. So it's nice to know that it's similar, but uh, it's your own flavor of it. Then I guess. Uh, yeah, but... and also very impressive. Sorry. I was just saying, we didn't want to be tied to, mm -hmm. you know, WPF is, is very much a Windows technology. We've made it run cross-platform. Um, but what we see from a lot of customers is that they're using it as a stepping stone to, to migrate fully to Avalonia and get all of the benefits of a modern XAML uh, UI framework. Yeah, and also very cool that you can actually, you know, is it uh, the XPF, which can run WPF applications? That's, uh, yeah. that's some pretty cool magic going on there as well. So very, yeah. very nice stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, sorry, Rachel, were you going to uh, say something? No, agreeing. Very nice. Good. It, it is almost like magic. Um, there is another question here. It should be kind of an easy one, I guess. Uh, can MAUI controls also be embedded on Mac and Windows? On Mac and Windows, they can't. Um, so on Mac, MAUI is using Catalyst. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, we, we have our own uh, we we call it microcom. So we've got our own bindings to what is app kit. So that's kind of the the older way of building macOS applications, which means that we can support a broader range of uh, versions of macOS. Um, so there's no path for that for um, macOS and and Windows, but we Maui embedding is just iOS and Android right now.
next up. Actually, next before up. we go on with more questions, do we want to do a raffle? Oh yeah, let's let's kick off a raffle. And uh, while that's running, we, we have some more questions. Uh, so yeah, we have a question for that. Um, nice one. If you've been paying attention, you should know the answer to this one. What is the cross-platform uh, rendering platform that many UI frameworks are using to deliver uh, experiences on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux? As a tip, Avalonia UI is using it. So we'll see if anybody's been uh, paying attention right at the start there. And uh, we'll see. Oh, straight in there, Alex. Oh, right yeah, oh, that was that was clearly too easy. I was thinking we haven't mentioned it for a while, and it's too easy. Of course, the answer is Skia, uh, yeah. and that's the underlying library that you're you're using to to power uh, all of Avalonia. Um, it looks like, so, uh, Alex L got to it. Yeah, Alex L, if you send us a, an email, um, we will then uh, arrange the, the the raffle prize for you uh, there. Um, so we'll, we'll jump straight back into a question then. Um, I'm speaking of rendering engines. Um, Someone was asking about uh, Skia and also asking about Impeller. So, like, if you've if you used Skia, what about other rendering engines such as Impeller, which I'm not aware of, to be perfectly honest? Yeah, so Impeller is the the new rendering engine uh, that's going to be powering Flutter. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's GA yet. It, it might be. So, forgive me if I'm wrong on that. But it's certainly uh, it's it's focused on on mobile. So right now it supports iOS and Android. It's something we're aware of, and I've kind of talked to the team about maybe we look to support it in the future. Um, but with, I mean, our strength is very much desktop. Um, so Ski is working very well for us right now. Um, we can we can swap out the rendering technology pretty quickly. It's not a huge amount of work for us to do that because we're so well architected in terms of clear separation of concerns. Um, so yeah, it might be something we look at with V12 um, potentially next summer. It might be a slightly more longer term depending on uh, how the project progresses. Cool. Rachel, have you got a question? Yeah, yep. Here's a... Not so much about the code per se. How about the job market? What is it like for Avalonia developers? What's the uptake from businesses and are people moving from WPF? So, yeah, that's interesting because I don't go, I do a lot more web stuff. I don't go over there. What's it like over there? Yeah, so there's there's a huge amount of enterprises looking for Avalonia, uh, Avalonia developers. Um, we and it's very global. Um, we, we have some data on where people are uh, when they're building um, or consuming Avalonia, and, and, and it's very much a global technology. Um, so yeah, there's a huge amount of demand for uh, developers. That, but I think that if you're if you're struggling to find jobs and when you're looking on like Indeed or other job search websites, um, a lot of companies are, are still looking to hire WPF developers and then start that migration process um, so as i say if you if you have experience with wpf then you're already an expert gotcha. that sounds good it's nice to have uh, transferable skills with that then yeah yeah that's good um uh, another quick question and I, I think um is about the binding system do you support compiled bindings that, we do it's uh, it's switched on by default okay i must confess that i don't know what compiled bindings are so would you mind uh, elaborating a yeah little? It just it, it means that we can do ahead of time compilation so that rather than having to to resolve the binding at runtime, um, it's all done ahead of time. Um, and it just means your application is going to be faster and the views are going to load faster and it's going to be just much more responsive. That sounds good. That's the kind of thing we want. Brilliant. Um, do we have any more questions, Rachel, or should we move uh, on? There's one more left, which is, can Avalonia support or embed Blazor components or Razor syntax similar to how Maui Blazor hybrid does this? Yeah, I saw um, I saw somebody in the community was working on this last week. Um, I saw, and even before that, I've seen examples of someone playing with it like a year or two ago. It is possible. It's not something we support as a first party from the core team, um, but there are people in the community working on enabling that as a, as, as a solution. Okay. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Um, okay, then I think we'll we'll wrap up. Mike, thank you very much for a, a fantastic uh, demo there and um, uh, a presentation. It's a really impressive bit of technology and it looks very cool. And thank you. Uh, they're getting a, a lot of love in the comments there as well. A lot of uh, people impressed and I think they might be wanting to try it out. So uh, this awesome. is very good. Right, well, thank you so thank much. very much.